everyone. Welcome to today's episode of the Big Dunch Show. Today, we will be talking about 76ers, Joel Embiid winning NBA MVP, Bryce Harper coming back to the Phillies, the NBA playoffs, and a whole lot more. Just a reminder to like the Big Dunch Show on Spotify and to subscribe to my YouTube, Big Dunch. Let's get right into it. Starting off always with the NFL. Not much going on. Uh, since our last show today, however, Reynold Cobb signed with the Jets. I'm calling the Jets the New York Packers, right? Aaron Rodgers, Lazard, now Randall Cobb. I mean, yeah, he he he's past his prime, definitely, right? He is a, obviously his friendship though with Aaron Rodgers is very good, and that of course could help. I don't see how we could start much on the Packers. I'm sorry, on the Jets. A one-time Pro Bowler, this is off the NFL website. Cobb has seen his production dwindle over the past several seasons. That's correct. He generated 375 yards. 28 catches with five touchdowns in 2021. Okay, so obviously a lot past his prime, but it's that, you know, that connection that he has with Aaron Rodgers. Last season, he missed four games. He caught, he caught 34 passes for 417 yards and one touchdown. Okay, he's 32 years old, doesn't have much left, but obviously the main focus, though, of that offense is going to be Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, McCole Hardman, Corey Davis, Denzel Min. So that's probably the last way to see if they go after right? So he could be a solid veteran in that room, which obviously those wide receivers need. A lot of them are very young. Majority of them are young. So I think it could be a, a, I think it's a good uh, decision, right? Probably might not get over 20 yards, but like I said, it's that friendship, that veteran leadership that I have. I think it's a pretty good signing for the Jets. So that's all I have for the NFL news. Well, I guess we can talk about the draft, right? The draft did happen, but I did make a video of my Steelers. Okay. Uh, how they drafted, I thought they did very, very good. We obviously saw Bryce Young go first overall, CJ Stroud, and then also them trade the Texans also trading to get um the linebacker out of or the edge out of Alabama. I, I forget off the top of my head. Um, it was a pretty solid draft. It was a lot, very, very exciting compared to the last couple of years. Last year was bad, especially quarterback wise. When there's a lot of quarterbacks in the draft, it's guaranteed to be an exciting draft. So we had off the board CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson. Will Levis, which he went late, all right? People rejected him to be a top five pick. It was either going to be he, he, like people rejected him to go to the Colts, and it was either him or Anthony Richardson. Colts went with Anthony Richardson. Me personally, I think that was a bad decision, but I'm not going to hate. Uh, Titans ended up trading up to got Will Levis. So now they have Ryan Tannehill, Will Levis, and Blake Willis, three guys who are mediocre. Right? I mean, you can't say Will Levis is mediocre, right? He's a rookie. So what I'm saying is he really hasn't proven himself yet. Okay, Malik Willis, he he played in games last year, did not play good at all. Titans basically affirmed that, well, we do not want him. I don't blame him. Thank, thankfully, the Steelers did not go after Malik Willis last year. We picked Kenny Pickett when we did. Uh, there was a lot of rumors. A lot of Steelers friends wanted Malik Willis over Kenny Pickett. I thought that was a terrible decision. I won an offensive line last year, but we still drafted Kenny Pickett. And that's fine. He obviously, I think, you know, Kenny Pickett could be a solid uh, future for us. But as Steelers, we draft offensive line and Joey Porter Jr. We, brought, we got Broderick Jones, offensive tackle out of Georgia. We got Joey Porter Jr. Washington from Georgia. He's going to be solid. Herbig, Kean, Kean, Keanu, Benton. Just trying to think off the top of my head. But we had a solid draft. A lot of teams have solid drafts. Eagles, they probably had the best draft. They're having a very solid offseason right now. I mean, it's locked up their franchise quarterback. Got DeAndre Swift in a, in a trade. Drafts a lot of good guys. Howie Roseman, I remember when, like, in the beginning, elite Eagles fans hate it, Howie Roseman. Now they love him, and I don't blame you, right? I mean, he's very doing very good now. He's going after guys. I just want to see – I'm just curious to see how long this lasts. You know, when you have a lot of good players, it's going to be a lot of money, right? And, you know, I'm curious. See, this won't last long, so they got to make the most out of it now. They lost in the Super Bowl last year, but the Eagles got to make the most out of what they have. You know, on paper right now, the Eagles are the best team, right? Like roster wise, they're definitely the best team right now. I, I just I can't think of any team better than them. You know, just off of personnel. Yeah, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, but like personnel wise, Chiefs are better than the Eagles at everything besides quarterback and tight end. If I'm really thinking about it. So we'll see. We'll see. I hate the Eagles, but I gotta admit they had a solid draft. They had a solid draft. Moving over, staying in Philadelphia. We saw Joel Embiid, the process, win the NBA MVP this year. Okay, he had 33 points, led the league back-to-back in scoring 33 points. Okay, he had 10 total rebounds, four assists, a steal, and a block. Okay, average all of that. So it's definitely, definitely deserving. Of course, the argument, though, is Nikola Jokic. Okay, we take a look at Nikola Jokic stats on a valuable like, standpoint. 
and I'm a Sixers fan. I hate to say this, but I I wanted to see Joel Embiid win it because I'm obviously a Sixers fan. I grew up, you know, when Joel Embiid was drafted, right? I watched literally the process of him becoming so dominant. Now I wanted to see him win. I'm happy to see him win. But if we're talking about actual like being valuable, we look at Nikola Jokic. 24 points, 11 total rebounds, 9 assists, 9.8 assists, so almost a triple-double as a center. Averages 1.3 steals and 0.7 blocks a game. Okay, led his team to number one um, in the West. I don't know. I, I wouldn't have been mad if I saw Jokic or Jokic. I don't even know how to pass his last name. Uh, here, here, pronunciation based on basketball reference, Nikola Jokic. Okay, either way, I would not have been mad if I saw him win MVP. He's already a two-time MVP, which I think is also deserving. But if he would have been MVP, but okay, it's, I'll say it this way: Joel Embiid was more dominant this year, no doubt about it. Thirty-three points, ten rebounds, or eleven rebounds, whatever he had, just dominant, very dominant. But like more valuable, value, valuable. It's hard to say that fast. Okay, the most important player to the team, I think, is Nikola Jokic. I don't know, I. I'm a Sixers fan, like I said. I'm a Joel Embiid fan. I have his jersey. I just, I wouldn't be mad if I saw you joking. Either way, Joel Embiid won it. I just got to be happy, okay? Somebody on the Sixers finally won something. Ben Simmons won a rookie deal last year, but it's cool to see. It's cool to see. We're playing the Celtics now. We just won game one, so that's very good. Let's talk about the recap real quick. Yesterday, the Heat lost to the Knicks, 111 to 105. This series is going to be solid, right? I mean, nobody thought the Heat were going to beat the Bucks like that. That was unbelievable. So, yeah, Knicks are up. The series is tied 1-1. Lakers and Warriors. I'm rooting for the Warriors. I hate the Lakers. Okay, Lakers won 117-112 on the road. So, in Warriors, hometown at home, they lose. Jordan Poole took that last-minute shot. I mean, it could have been a better shot, right? It could have been a better shot, but Poole still, excuse me, Poole still played uh, pretty good. Uh, Anthony Davis played solid, right? He had like four blocks. LeBron doing what LeBron does. Curry, he got to score more. He just has to score more. That's all there is to it. Dennis Schroeder had himself a solid day, right? People, I mean, I it reasonably, right? He got hated on a lot when he left the, the Lakers. Had a chance to sign for more money. Signed terrible money. I think it was with the Celtics. Came back to the Lakers. But he's still a solid, solid um, player now. Let's look at the game leaders from that game. Anthony Davis, 30 points. Steph Curry, 27 rebounds. Anthony Davis, 23 rebounds. Looney, 23 rebounds. This is unbelievable. I didn't see that. That is unbelievable. Hold on. They both had 23 rebounds. D'Angelo Russell, 6 assists. Damon Green, 7 assists. Hold on. I got to look at this box score quick. 23 rebounds apiece? Anthony Davis, geez, 30 points, 23 rebounds, five assists, four blocks. What a game by him. And then Kevin Moody, he had 10 points and 23 rebounds. Geez, 23 rebounds each. That's a lot. I think I ever saw something like that before. Each, right? I mean, we saw 23 rebounds before. But each, that's insane. Anthony Davis obviously went healthy. He's the second best power forward in the league, him and, him and Giannis. Let's take a look at today's matchups. Wednesday, May 3rd, Sixers and Celtics. So Sixers are up one. Oh, this is it also this is also in Boston. We won game one. Happy about it. Happy about it. Let's see if Joel is playing today. Okay, let me see if Joel is Joel be playing today. I should know this, right? As a huge Sixers fan. Well, not huge. I can't really admit. He is expected to miss game two, but James Harden played a very solid game on um, last week. Had over 40 points. Last game and against the Celtics, game one, had over 40 points, did his role, played like 2016 and 2017, James Harden. That's what we needed. He did exactly that. So we'll see tonight. I doubt we win this one, right? I think game one was just like a, you know, shock to the Celtics. I think the Celtics are going to pull this one. The series, though, it's up for grabs, up in the air. I really don't know how this will go down. Joel needs to come back. He, need, he I hope, hopefully he comes back by, you know, game three in Philadelphia. But Let's stay with Philadelphia. Talking about the Philadelphia Phillies. Go Phillies. Got killed yesterday, though. 13-1 game before that. 13-4. We're on a three-game losing streak. I hate games in L.A., especially on the, like at night. Last night was like a 10 o'clock game. 
I wanted to see Bryce Harper's first game back. He should have waited. Like, I'll, I'll keep it real, okay? Bryce Harper should have waited until their next home game, at least. Also, I think I would have been happy to see Bryce Harper just not rush it. Like, I would have been fine seeing him come back in June. We didn't really need him that much. Okay, okay, let me take this back. We do need Bryce Harper. We need healthy Bryce Harper. But off a horn, I'm sorry, a Tommy John surgery, coming back, rushing down, he went over four. No, it's reasonable. Okay, over four. First game back, that happens to a lot of people. I, that's I'm not worried about that. Bryce Harper going over four, who cares? He's an MVP, helped us basically take us to the World Series last year. I'm not worried about that. But I would have liked to see Bryce Harper at least, just from a fan point of view, would have liked to see him come back with our, our first home game, you know, the next home game. He had his Tommy John surgery. Okay, let's see how long he was out for. I don't know. He's out, he, he got a surgery like four months ago. It was only 160 days ago. On November 23rd, that Harper went, underwent surgery to repair a torn ulnar collateral ligament, this is off ESPN, in his right elbow. The initial pro- prognosis had him returning after the All-Star break, but Harper set his sights on this series from Dodger Stadium, the place where he made his major league debut. All right, okay, that's reasonable. That's his target. It's 10 o'clock, though. Come on, do it tomorrow. Do it in a game where people can watch it. 10 o'clock's late. He beat the time, initial timeline of more than two months and went, wound up returning from Tommy John surgery. So probably not going to play the field. Okay, I mean, throwing. They they wanted to get him to first base, which I don't think was needed at all. Just have him DH stressed here. Don't have him throw. Okay, Alec Bum was doing fine at first base. I mean, we're mi- mixing up with him and Mendo Sosa too, but I like him also at third base. There's no reason to have Bryce Harper throw. I'm fine with where he at. DH is no fine. I just, I just, I just hope this doesn't bite us in the butt, right? I hope this doesn't come back and Harper ends up getting injured. Again, I hope I'm not a doctor, obviously, so I'm not going to say this is a bad decision. Okay, I can't say it's a bad decision because the doctors and trainers are more than me. I just hope it was a good decision, I guess you could say. I hope it's the right decision because, I don't know, we're on a three-game loser streak. We need him back. We do need him back. I just don't know if we need to rush him back. Excuse my itchy eyes. All the dust flying around. We're at 15 and 16 right now. So the Dodgers tonight, 4-10. Our, our bullpen's terrible. Bullpen's terrible, but it doesn't excuse us only having one run yesterday, four runs the day before, three runs against the Astros, and then, yeah, we're, we're our offense needs to get going too. Is what I'm saying. Let's take a look at the standings though in the MLB. Well, let's take a look at other uh, matchups today. Detroit Tigers beating the Mets four two. Love to see that. Texas Rangers defeating the Diamondbacks right now one nothing. Top of the third. Bottom of the second in Houston right now tied up. Astros and San Francisco Giants at zero. I say this like it matters because I'm going to be posting this like an hour from now. So obviously the scores are going to be a bit different. Reds and the Padres play at four o'clock. The Braves and Marlins play at 640. I guess the Mets and Tigers have a double header today. They're playing at 640 also. Tigers, I'm sorry, the Rays and Rays are hosting the Pirates. Pirates are playing very solid. So of course the Rays. I can't believe this is going to be a good game, right? I'm happy for the Pirates. They're 20 and 10. Rays are 24 and 6. The Chicago Cubs and the Washington Nationals, they play at 705. The Guardians and Yankees play at 7 o'clock. Twins and White Sox play at 7 o'clock. Same with Blue Jays in Boston. They all play at 710. Um, Baltimore and Kansas City Royals, 740. Angels and Cardinals at 745. Brewers, Rockies, 840. Mariners and the Athletics at 940. I was looking at the Athletics Stadium yesterday. There was a picture of it. It said like a quarter of 2,000 people. It looked like 200, 300 people at max. I don't, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Like how, how have they been that? I'm just curious to know how they've been that successful for that long to begin with. They play in the Raiders Stadium, which is a dump. I mean, the area too around it is a dump. No disrespect, but it is. I just don't get how they've been had that much success and be able to stay there. Right. I mean, them moving and them selling the team is long overdue. I don't think they're selling the team. They're not, they're not selling the team. They should sell the team. I think they're going, moving to Las Vegas is, I mean, I don't know. It's going to be a lot of guys who, a lot of people, as you say, a lot of fans that they don't really care about the A's, but hey, baseball, why not just go? Maybe they'll add more fans. Who knows? But the A's are, they're embarrassing lately. Let me just say, let me just say. All righty. Well, that's baseball. That's baseball. Let's talk about, boxing well first let's talk about ufc get ufc out of the way not to disrespect ufc i just don't really talk about ufc much on this show so decided to do it right now we have this weekend ufc 288 
Let's see where it's at. It's supposed to be in the Prudential Center, New Jersey. Okay, a bit different. All Jermaine Sterling fighting Henry Cejudo for the Batam Weight Championship. Sterling, 22 and 3. Cejudo, 16 and 2. Then the co main, Bilal Muhammad versus Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns is fighting. He is fighting. Let's see this quick. Burns just fought like two months ago. I could have swore. Pretty sure that's the same Burns that just fought. What's his face? Like two months ago. Let me look this up quick. Yeah, Masvidal. Yeah, he just fought him in April. That's unbelievable. Fought him in April. Okay. And then that's unbelievable. Less than a month later, he fights Bilal Muhammad, who is no joke. He's a legit contender. He's a legit fighter. They call me. That's impressive. Shout out to Gilbert uh, Burns. Yeah, just fought a month ago. This, this will be his third fight this year. Had two wins already. He fight Neil Magny in January. Defeated Jorge Masvidal by decision. Respect to Gilbert Burns. All seriousness. I know he's been in the UFC for a while. He's been at it for a while. Jessica Andrade versus Yen Dionin. Hopefully I uh, pronounced that right. Most far uh, Evliloev. Sorry, I pronounced that wrong. Versus Diego Lopez. I think that's a fill-in. I think that's a fill-in. Lightweight, Charles Oliveira versus Neil Darius. That was canceled, unfortunately. Bryce Mitchell versus Jonathan Pierce, also canceled. Mavsar Evloev versus Bryce Mitchell, canceled. I think that was a fight that Bryce Mitchell got injured, I'm pretty sure. So Diego Lopez took that spot. Other news, the next UFC main event, let's see which one that is, 289, I think. Amanda Noon versus Irene Aldana now. It was, oh my goodness, Pena, I think it was. That was gone, but it's still Charles Oliveira. He's in the co-main. I think that should be the main event, but it's not. But obviously, a championship fight is always going to be the main event. So, Walter, wait. This is 289 UFC, 289 June 10th. This is in Canada. It's actually, so that's pretty cool. Mike Malkoff versus Adam Fuji. Dan, uh, Dan EJ versus Nate Landwehr. I'm, I'm not going to keep pronouncing these names wrong. So, uh, that's the UFC, though. Big fight this week. Henry Sudo is a very exciting fighter, a legend in the UFC. So, so it was stirring now. So, let's go right to boxing. Excuse me, quick. Let me take a tissue break. We're all back now. This weekend, we have Canelo Alvarez versus John Ryder for Canelo's WBA, WBC, IBF, WBO, super middleweight titles. It's always exciting to see, you know, Canelo Alvarez back. This is Cinco de Mayo weekend. It's always exciting to see Canelo in the ring. Always is. But John Ryder, I, I don't see this going past eight rounds, unfortunately. The tune-up fight. Canelo really, really wants this b-ball fight. It seems like it, right? He wants that matchup. Okay, he wants to avenge the loss. And I personally, as a fan of boxing, I just think it's useless. I can understand from Alvarez's point of view, he's competitive. He wants that win. However, I just think that him facing B-ball is kind of unnecessary. It's not needed. If you're a true fan of boxing, if you support Canelo, if you're a true fan of boxing, you should support Canelo, right? I don't get the hate for Canelo. I do get the hate. I understand why people hate, but it's stupid why they hate. Um, If you are a true fan of boxing, you got to understand. You should just like appreciate like, okay, Canelo, it's all right that you lost to B-ball. It's a whole different weight class. Okay, you had to bump up. You're too, you're too small for that weight class. B-Ball is very, very good. Okay, he's the, he could be argue, you could argue if he's the best or the second best light heavyweight in the world with him and Arthur Better Bev. There's no reason to avenge that. You just got outskilled purely. You got beat. Okay. I just don't see him defeating B-Ball. B-Ball is only getting better, right? Canelo obviously is too, but B-Ball is young. He's explosive. He bounces on his feet. I just don't see Alvarez, Canelo. Uh, Canelo, I don't know why I said Alvarez. Just Canelo beating Bivol. I just don't see it. I think it's a useless fight. I think he should go after Benavidez. Just stay with the super middleweight bouts. You're undisputed. Try to be as undisputed as long as you could. Bump it up to Bivol. I just think Bivol beats him again. And this time, maybe by knockout. Maybe by knockout. Canelo has a strong chin. I doubt that happened. Maybe just TKO. Um, it doesn't have to be completely on the ground, but still. I just think that hand fighting B ball is a waste. Just accept it. You lost. It's all right. It's not a big deal. It doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. It doesn't ruin your legacy. I mean, you're bumping up a huge weight class like that. 
the major difference. B-ball, I mean, that's weight class. And bad decision. Bad decision. I feel like if Canelo actually did that. Who I want to see with B-ball is him fighting better Biev. Better Biev is scheduled to fight Tom Smith. That's another one that's going to be pretty bad. This is off Boxing News, so shout out to BoxingNews24.com. By Charles Brune. Eddie Hearn's match room boxing came up short today, losing out to Bob Arum's top rank on the first bid for IBF, WBC, and WBO light heavyweight champion for Arthur Better BF's title defense against WBC mandatory, Calm Smith. Arum came in with a winning bid of $2.1 million, whereas Hearn lost out of two point one. So okay, well, let me rename let me read this again. Arum came in with a winning bid of Two point one one five million, whereas Hearn lost out with a smaller bit of two point one. So fifteen thousand dollars just seemed like he lost out on geez. So yeah, we wanted to see Bivol, but there's some sanctions, I guess, with the Russia Russian Ukraine war that Bivol can't fight for the WBC belt because he's Russian. He lives in St. Petersburg. It's unfortunate that's what all the fans want. Smith is twenty nine. I'm sorry, yeah, twenty nine and one with twenty one KOs. He lost to of course Canelo. Undefeated, better be at 19 and 0 with 19 knockouts. He's dominant, but he's getting old. And that's the thing I'm worried about. When we see Bivol versus, versus better be if we do, might be too old. I mean, better be is pushing 40. Let's take a look at the age of better be I'm pretty sure he's 38 years old. Let's see. 38 years old. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see that fight happen when he was 41 years old. We're going back with Canelo. Okay, I don't want to see him fight Bivol. I want to see him fight better Biev. I'm sorry, Benavidez. And just continue to dominate in that super middleweight division. I think he's untouchable for the next five years in that super middleweight division. I don't see better Biev beating him. I think just, you know, simply outboxes him and could potentially TKO him at least, right? Um, Obviously proved he's better than Caleb Plant, better than a lot of those guys. I think he's going to destroy through John Ryder, probably beat him. And like I said, Eight rounds or less. Let's take a look at the cap, uh, the full card, though, for that fight. Julio Cesar Martinez versus Ronald Batista for Martinez WBC flyweight title. Gabriel Valenzuela versus Steve Spark. WBA Intercontinental Super Lightweight title. I'm so sick of these belts. WBA Intercontinental. Just have one belt each for the organize, organization or whatever. Nathan Devon Rodriguez versus Alexander Mejia featherweight. So this is in Mexico, pretty sure. Yeah, Alex Turns in Mexico, May 6th. I'm um, in Guadalajara. Hasn't fought, he hasn't fought in this country since 2011, so that's going to be going to be good, the country in Canelo. But uh, I'm just trying to see if I can if I notice any of uh, these younger guys on the card. I don't. It's going to be 7 o'clock on his own. Main event, ring walk approximately 11 o'clock. I like, so I like that they have that. The actual like approximate ring walk, okay? Because nobody like could never guess, you know what I mean? Especially newer guys. Like, I'm not newer, but still, um, like new guys trying to get into boxing, new people trying to get into boxing. It's always hard for them to like. When I I know when I first started getting into boxing, trying to pick up fights, it was hard for me. Like, like when's the fight going to be actually? Like, how could I schedule a plan for me to actually watch this fight? Like, it'll say like seven o'clock the time. I'll get ready for seven. The fight's not happening. That's like what the heck. So it's good to have that when the approximate like actual fight could happen. But uh, yeah, guys, that's majority of the fight. Let's take a look at this. This is the bio of John Ryder and Canelo Alvarez. Alvarez, born 1990. Okay, so he's what, 33 now? Yeah, 33. Height, 5 foot 8, reach, 70 inch reach. Total fights, 62, 58, 2 and 2. I always forget he has that other draw. He lost to Floyd, lost to Bivol, drawed with Triple G, which obviously Triple G could have won that. And then had a, had a draw early in his career. He has 39 knockouts. So let's take a look at John Ryder, British, date of birth, 19 of July, 1988. So like two years older than Canelo, 5'9", 72 inch reach, total fights 30, 70. He's 32 and 5 with 18 KOs. Five losses. This is what I'm saying. He has no chance. Maybe a surprise happens. Who knows? You know, hopefully he does, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be true for the underdog, but I like Canelo. I think Canelo would destroy him, especially in Canelo's home country, Mexico. It's going to be a tough environment for John Ryder, but hey, best of luck to him. Best of luck to him. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Make sure to leave a like on the YouTube video. Subscribe to my channel. Hope you guys listening on Spotify. This podcast enjoyed. I'm out, guys. Peace.